We'd like to move on to 5329 by Representative Slater. Representative Slater, thank you very much for hanging in with us. Um, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Bennett and uh, committee uh, members and my fellow colleagues. I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to hear this bill. Um, I put, I, this is probably, I think this might be the third year um, that I'm back with this bill um, as far as on captive hunting. And just for the, the history of where, um, why I sponsored this bill, I had a constituent that reached out to me. Um, a few years back, I think it was Representative Ucci when he was up here, put in a bill to allow for um, for uh, captive hunting, um, and that bill was put in, and then there was uh, some press that was generated about it, and uh, there was some outrage that I, that uh, from many people when they when they thought about the idea of captive hunting and hunting animals that are in an uh, enclosed area. Um, so I know there was like, and uh, I had a con so I know there was a lot of folks that got involved in the issue, and. Uh, one of my constituents had reached out to me and they, they were kind of outraged by the idea. Not only that, but the, the harm that it could cause to our ecological system and the environment in general by bringing animals that, uh, not only domestic animals that would be here, but other animals that, uh, so I had put this bill in, it's pretty clear. I think last week you, you had heard another bill from uh, Chairman McNamara um, on captive hunting. And uh, before I had come into the committee, someone had asked me what uh, the difference between my bill and uh, Chairman McNamara's bill was. I think Chairman McNamara's bill refers more to like trophy, trophy hunting. Mine is more of a definition of what captive hunting would be. And in my bill, it basically says, refers to the hunt that occurs within a structure designated to restrict the free movement of animals created by the use of fences man-made structures or natural barriers, including but not limited to private land set up as hunting or shooting preserves or game ranches, wherein the animal is restricted from escaping or fleeing from the confined area during the hunt. And no species or animal, whether domestic or wild, whether exotic to the state or naturally occurring in the state, may be imported into the state or release, released on any property. And, um, I did a lot of work with, um, and I really have to thank him, I know he's going to come on and testify, but Michael Woods with Backcountry Hunting and Anglers, New England uh, chapter of Backcountry Hunter, Hunters and Anglers. And he was very instrumental in helping me um, craft the bill and uh, addressing uh, certain issues that um, DEM. Now DEM sent a letter on this bill, um, and they're supportive of the bill. They have one uh, amendment. Uh, they have one change that they'd like to see in their language, and I'm supportive of that change. Um, and uh, one of the big things that they want to do is to um, address and make sure that um, in this bill the, um, it doesn't take into account um, pheasants or, or captive bird, which they, they, they allow right now. So that would, that would exempt that from this bill. So um, if there's any questions from the committee, I'm happy, happy to take them. I'm not um, an expert on hunting by any means, but um, you know when I had heard this, uh, the practice that they wanted as far as importing animals that aren't from this area, I, it just sounded sounded like a bad idea to me. And then as I as I researched it and found out more, there's a lot of problems that can be brought to to our ecological system, and one of the one of the major uh, issues is uh, chronic wasting disease, which can be you know, can be from deer that come in, even deer that are here, but the problem with the chronic wasting disease is you might say the deer are confined to a certain area, but what happens is they can, they can have chronic wasting disease and not show any signs for a long time, and it can be carried in like their urine and other things that are left behind in the, in the environment. So, thank you. Any questions for Representative Slater? Representative Fogarty. Representative Slater, did you say DEM is okay with the pheasant hunting? I believe yes. They're 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 okay with the language exempting uh, that 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 uh, hunting that's in here. So um, the pheasants can be brought in from out of state and put into these preserves. 
Um, so I'd have to look at, let me look at the uh, letter that they sent. I believe that's what it, um, Oh, you do? Okay. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, so, so. Yeah, so, so when my bill would, uh, um. All right. So we gotta go to the. So, DM proposed the following amendment to the legislature clar to clarify that the prohibition on importation of animals for captive hunting does not apply to game birds. So, so the term captive hunting shall not apply to the re release of domestic birds for hunting, whether on public property, private property, property properly licensed by the Department of Environmental Management as a shooting preserve, so yes. And I'm just wondering if they, they would carry any, when they say domestic bird, but if you're taking it from somewhere else and bring it in, how to qualify. What's domestic and what's not? Yeah. I actually was in a neighborhood um, close to one of those preserves down in Richmond, and it was a pheasant hunting shooting day. I don't know how anybody could live in the neighborhood. Yeah. It was like a war zone was going on. Oh my! And uh, I was visiting a friend, and she says, "Isn't this awful?" And there were two pheasants that were hiding in her shrubs, and it was just the most awful thing. I mean, they were terrified. I just, I, yeah. it's. It just stuck with me. That's why I'm like, I really was hoping that this would not be part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, just. I mean, I, I'm trying not to. Not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other Chair, questions? Chair, is there any way we can get that letter uploaded right now so the rest of us can see it? Yeah. The letter's on there if you look at the testimony. It's on the second page. And it says, uh, Captive Hunting, Rep Slater, dash letter final. Thank you, Rep Carson. I didn't see a second, I didn't see there was a second page in the tiny, tiny page uh, font at the bottom. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. We'll go to our thank, thank you, you thank you, Chairman, Sorry. and thank you, Committee. Our first witness will be Michael Woods. Hi, Michael, you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman Bennett and members of the committee, and also wanted to thank Representative Slater for introducing this bill uh, for the second time. My name is Michael Woods. I'm here today representing the New England chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, where I currently serve as the chair of the New England chapter board. I also live here in Rhode Island, and I hunt and fish here in Rhode Island. BHA is a North American conservation organization that focuses on access and opportunity to public lands, waters, and wildlife, and advocates for science-based wildlife management that follows the North American model of wildlife conservation. The bill that I'm here to speak in support of today, H5329, which would prohibit captive hunting for big game animals in Rhode Island, is something we've been working on in this General Assembly for three years now. And our work on this topic is in direct response to bills in previous years that intended to allow captive hunting, and I've included a number of those bills in my written testimony. The reason it's front and center when we're talking about prohibiting captive hunting, and specifically about importing members of the deer family for this reason, is the potential to introduce chronic wasting disease to our state, as Representative Slater mentioned. CWD is an always fatal disease that affects all members of the deer family, including white-tailed deer that are native to Rhode Island. There is currently no test capable of reliably detecting CWD in live deer, and infected deer can appear healthy for over a year before succumbing to the disease, during which time they are contagious through saliva, urine, feces, and other environmental contact. CWD is transmitted by prions, or misfolded proteins, which are nearly impossible to remove from the ecosystem once they're introduced. And the disease would be costly and difficult for the state to monitor and manage 
both from a biological and social perspective if it were to be imported and introduced. I should point out that importing live beer for capital funding is only one of the ways that CWD could be brought into our state, and many of the others are already recognized and have been prohibited by regulations promulgated by the Department of Environmental Management. CWD has never been detected in any of our New England states, which should make preventing its introduction a top priority. And many of our neighboring states have already enacted policy to protect our region's ecosystem from CWD's introduction, and I've included the regulation numbers from Connecticut and Massachusetts that pertain to captive hunting there, which are nearly identical to what this bill proposes to the General Assembly here today, and, and I've included those in my written testimony. It's also relevant to mention that wild and feral, or feral pigs are popular in the captive hunting industry and are notoriously difficult to contain within fences. While they are genetically identical to farm, farm pigs, those kept in a feral or wild state develop thick fur, large tusks, and are more aggressive in disposition, and also reproduce at a rapid rate. Established populations of wild pigs currently inhabit 35 U.S. states and cost an estimated $1.5 billion of damage annually, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. If captive hunting for wild pigs were allowed, it would likely only be a matter of time before animals escaped a compromised fence and started causing problems with our farms, our gardens, and our native wildlife, not to mention conflicts with people. I've already mentioned that my group's basis for working with Representative Slater to introduce this bill is in direct response to proposals that intended to legalize captive hunting and establish industry here in Rhode Island. To be clear, there are currently no captive hunting facilities operating in our state, so this proposal would not be putting anyone out of business. It would, however, clarify a legal gray area and ensure the General Assembly did not need to continue entertaining this debate every year. And it would also ensure that Rhode Island's wildlife and native ecosystem had the best possible chance to persist and thrive for future generations, free of the hazards that I've described here today. Um, as Representative Slater mentioned, the Department of Environmental Management supports the bill and suggests alteration that doesn't substantially change the bill, but does help clarify that the prohibition on importation of animals for captive hunting does not apply to game birds, and we agree with the suggestion. I appreciate Representative Fogarty's question, and I wanted to clarify that the section of Rhode Island general law that this bill would amend currently regulates cap or hunting for what they define as domestic game birds on shooting preserves, and the intention is that this does not affect that section of law, but it does prohibit the, the importing of other animals for captive hunting. Thank you for your time and for your consideration on, uh, on our, our opinion and our position, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee has. Any questions? Seeing none, Michael, thank you very much. Have a thank good you. night. Our next witness will be Sue Ann Dubois. Eric? Eric Northrup. Eric, can you hear me? Hello, Eric. Yes, hello. Hi, this is Representative Bennett, Chairman of hello, the Environment and Natural Resources Committee. You're, the floor is yours. Okay, sir. My name is Eric Northup. Thank you for your time. I'm the Director of Operations at the Preserve at Boulder Hill. Uh, I just wanted to give a little background to our thoughts on this. In the state of Rhode Island, there are 179,000 sportsmen that spend $154 million annually supporting approximately 2,500 jobs. We find that a large percentage of introduction to hunting happens through managed hunts. Today, those hunts happen in other states. Those experiences result in building lifelong ties to nature, the outdoors, and hunting. Without this tool, some individuals would never get involved in hunting. This bill would cause an adverse effect on a subset of the economy that could exist at a very few venues in the state, providing jobs, livelihoods, and these preserves are also used for research. 
Managed hunting provides a safe, effective, and hunting atmosphere with a field-to-table lifestyle while providing revenue to our state. We think at a preserve of 500 acres or more that this bill should not apply. That's, uh, that's all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Eric. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, uh, that will move on. Thank you very much, Eric, for your testimony. Next is uh, Sue Anderboys. Oh, okay. Hank Webster, are you there? He's not there? Oh, he is. Hello, Hank, are you there? I am here, yes. Oh, okay, so uh, <laughs> if you'd like to testify, you may proceed. Sure. Thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. I can't see what's going on now, but I, I understand <laughs> that there is a change in, in who's running the show, so thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my it's name is Representative McEntee, so. Uh, yes, I, th I thought so. I thought I recognized <laughs> the voice, but um, thank you, Chair McEntee. Um, uh, my name is Hank Webster, and on this bill, I'm just testifying uh, on behalf of myself and no entity. Uh, I just wanted to say that this is the second year in a row I will testify in support of this bill uh, and, and specifically against the practice of, of canned hunting. Um, I don't have any issue with hunting, uh, normal hunting, um, where, you know, there is a bit of sport to it. Uh, it's not my cup of tea, but I recognize the, the fact that it's part of our, our human history and uh, all of the values that the previous caller uh, spoke to. I think that there are times when proposals go beyond the pale of those values, and uh, this is one of them. Uh, uh, having captive animals uh, is not is not hunting. Um, no matter how large the space, uh, and and I think the larger the space, the harder it would be to contain them. So I don't understand why there would be an exception. The larger the space got, um, and I just want to also second all of the ecological uh, arguments that uh, previous callers that that have much more subject matter expertise uh, have said. So. Uh, again, Hank Webster, just as an individual uh, in rural Rhode Island, West Greenwich, as rural as it gets, uh, in opposition to canned hunting, so in support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hank. Uh, any questions from the committee? Hearing none, uh, thank you for your testimony, Hank, and uh, I happen to agree with you. It's a good bill. Uh, thank you. I think that concludes, that concludes the uh, verbal testimony. I just want to uh, indicate that there are several letters. We have uh, a l written testimony from Lillian Ferranti. She's opposed. Lenny Lopes, he's for it, for the bill. Um, Rhode Island Veter Veterinary Medical Association are in support of the bill. Uh, Michael Ryan, he did the, uh, from DEM, he did the amendments. Uh, Wildlife Rehabilitators Association is in favor of the bill. Ariana Marasian is in favor of the bill. And George Zania is in favor of the bill. So with that, uh, that concludes testimony on House Bill 5329. So, You're all set. Thank you, Representative McEntee. You're very <coughs> welcome, Chairman. I know you don't have your sidekick with you tonight, so. No, he's virtual, he's right <laughs> he's there. He's out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that concludes that bill. 